Hi, welcome back to Chem with Go. Today we're going to take a look at steric number three, the different shapes that uh, a molecule with a steric number three would have, the possible shapes, and uh, what they would look like if we went ahead and drew their uh, structures. So let's take a look at the examples. Well, the only possible structures that we can have for steric number three would be trigonal planar or bent. So let's take a look at trigonal planar first, and then show, I'll show you guys how to actually draw that structure. OK, so our example in this uh, shape is uh, BCL3, which is boron trichloride. So let's draw its lowest dot structure, boron note that only has three valence electrons, and the chlorines around them have seven valence electrons each. So this is what the lowest dot structure would look like. So we have this T-shaped short uh, sort of uh, um, structure. So this is boron trichloride. Now, let's take a look and determine the steric number again. Uh, from a previous uh, video, you should be pretty um, proficient at determining what the steric number of these molecules would be once you've drawn the Lewis dot structures. So in this case, boron is the central atom, and it looks like it has three bonding areas. And around boron, there are zero lone pairs. So three bonding areas, zero lone pairs. We add that together, we get a steric number uh, equal to three. Okay. Now this happens to be trigonal planar. So and trigonal planar has that exact combination of three bonding areas. Okay, and zero lone pairs. Now, if we just study the name really quick, when we say trigonal, it's in the shape of a triangle. And then when we say planar, that actually means it's flat. So we have a flat triangle. So what is this structure going to look like? Let's go ahead and draw that real quick. All right, so according to Vesper theory, again, that's valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. All bonding areas and lone pairs in simple molecular geometries will try to maximize the distance between each other and mac therefore maximize the bond angles. Now, if we happen to have three bonding areas and zero lone pairs, and it happens to be in a planar molecule or a flat molecule, what do you think the bond angle will be for each one of those bonding areas? Well, just think about if we had a complete circle, and we had three things bonded around that circle, or three locations around the circle, in what way do we draw or position the chlorines in such a way that they are maximizing the angles between each other? Well, we just divide the circle into three equal components. So we go one, two, and three. And we put the chlorines at each one of those bonds. So we know that we already have single bonds between those. And boron trichloride is your structure. Now, uh, some people will prefer to go ahead and draw circles or spheres for every single one of these. So you got those, those, and this one right here. All right, so we have a triangular shaped molecule. It happens to be flat or planar or two-dimensional. And uh, that's the shape of this molecule. A couple other things. Let's try to figure out what the bond angle is again. So we, let's go ahead and make sure we label that. This is again 120 degrees. And note that each one of these bond angles will be 120 degrees. Because what really is happening is that these bonds, so what I'm drawing in green, are trying to maximize the distance between each other. Again, if we have this, uh, if we have a circle divided into three equal parts, 120 degrees each, they have the maximum bond angle between them. All right, and that's it for this example. Let's take a look at uh, the uh, other steric number three molecule, and that happens to be the bent structure in another video. I'll talk to you soon.